This is a rent video, so it will have no structure and I'll just go with it. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where a junkie on good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. If you like the drama, Yu Long Miss the Dragon, exit now. Because you're not gonna like what I'm going to talk about in this video and there's absolutely no need to voluntarily look for things that will irritate you. If you are still here, then everything that happens to you due to watching the rest of this video is on you. Let's rant about Yulong Miss the Dragon. This drama aired very recently on Tencent, adaptation of a game within the game. There was a game quite a while ago that actually got made into a drama already. It talks about people who try to break through in the acting business. Main character is an actor and one of the script they get. This drama is based on the game script, if that makes any sense. Yulong means encounter the dragon. The original story is pretty simple. It's a girl encountering a dragon king. Watch any Chinese fantasy, you should be pretty familiar with what it is. They've made a drama. Before that, people have already edited fan videos that is putting different actors and actresses performance in other dramas, editing them together and making their own version. Luo Yunxi and Zhao Liying yeah, were the two person that most people like to use as their fan video of the meeting the dragon story. Now we've got the actual production of the drama that's led by Wang Hedi and Zhu Xudan. And after watching a few episodes, most people would agree the fan made video are actually much better. <sighs> I don't know how I sat through four episodes and I don't care what happened afterwards. I don't care if the story got more interesting, whatever. The beginning of the drama warranties the fact that nobody should go and watch it. It's not worth it. Time of your life, you're never gonna get back. So I'm just gonna talk about the points that really annoyed me in the first two episodes and everything beyond that, I don't even want to bother to jog down notes. After the title song, we see a horse-drawn carriage among a bamboo forest. A group of people are on their journey and you see there is a mark on the carriage that says Xia. So it kind of shows, okay, this belongs to the Xia family. Cuts into the carriage, you see two girls and in their lines, they directly tell you one is the lady, the other is the maid. Because if they don't say that, you can't tell. There's literally no distinguishable mark to tell you one is the owner and the other is pretty much the slave. The lady is called Xia Houxue. So that's the first mistake the drama has made, showing that scriptwriter knows nothing about culture and literature and Chinese whatever, not qualified to be a scriptwriter because Xiaohou is the surname, not Xia. There are a couple of double character surnames, very ancient surnames, that are still in use today. Don't think many Xiaohou are still here, but ancient time we can agree Xiaohou still exists. So if this family is named Xiaohou, then on the whole strong card it should be Xiaohou, not Xia. Pretty much the first 20 seconds showed me that this drama is definitely not watchable. Then the carriage got stopped suddenly and our lady twisted her ankle while she's sitting in the cart. It's not going at a very high speed anyway, and it's not a car crash in more than time. I don't see how you can actually twist your ankle while you're sitting in the carriage, but anyway, the drama shows that she twisted her ankle. And the people who stopped the carriage are a group of people running away from a famine, and they're famished, and they ran into the carriage, and then pointing is like, I want your food. So our female lead character, who is the maid, not the lady, hand out one dish of cakes, whatever, to that guy. And without that guy actually requesting for more, the female character is like, do you want more? I'll give the rest of all the food we have in our garage to you without actually first asking the lady's permission. Maybe in this family household, the lady actually doesn't have a say. It's the maid who's running it, who knows? Immediately afterwards, our leading female character who is a maid told another servant, go and try to buy some egg flour, wine, or liquor from the surrounding villagers so that I can make up something to treat my lady's twisted ankle. Okay, so you've just had a group of people who are running from a famine, who are starved, and who looked for food. What are the possibilities of you being able to actually find some peasants living around who actually has food in their household? Mm -hmm. And it's only two and a half minutes. I've already pointed three things out that does not make sense. And then she had this conversation while dressing the ankle with her lady and said, my biggest dream is to see a dragon one day. And she looked up and there's a freaking dragon in the cloud! <laughs> Why? I want to see Tom Hiddleston. Can I just turn around and see 
see him just standing there? Like, do I not deserve that? For the rest of the stuff, let's just point out a few things that just... <laughs> First, you will see when they get home, this maid, our female lead character Liu Ying, has a huge, well-decorated private room. Her bedroom is literally bigger than my entire place. Every room added together. And the decoration is the, at the level of an aristocratic lady. The lady she serves disappears. It's all her. Like, no, there's nobody else in this house. Only her. And she has her big room. She doesn't take care of the lady's hair or makeup, help her dress or wash her stuff or do housework. Like there's nothing she does as a maid. Where is that place? I want to go and apply for a job as a maid because clearly I get paid and I live in extravagant place and I don't have to do anything. While our mate's illogical story is progressing, our male lead, the dragon, also needs to progress. So he shows up in this place that is pretty much copied from a game but does not matter, comes out of the water and then turns into this white-haired man that's played by Wang Hudi. And then he's told that if he wants to pass the heavens a mm, couple of days later, this thunder strike test so that he could finally become a god, he has to do something and he's like, okay, I'm gonna go and steal this thing, it's supposedly to be heavily guarded. Epically, it's the first time I've seen anything on Chinese television fantasy drama with a male lead who fights with his magic without doing anything. His face does not have expression, his eyes does not even move or change focus, his body is stiff and just standing there, he doesn't raise a hand, he doesn't do anything, not even the blink, he just stands there and when he gets wire work and pulled up in the sky, he literally rises like a stick without moving any part of his body. The CGI comes out of his body and kills his enemy. Earning the money by standing there. The laziest wire work fighting scene I've ever seen in the history of drama making. Then on our female lead side, it doesn't get any better. She somehow goes to the back mountain of their mansion, which is a totally made up CGI plus a little bit plasticky set making of a flower valley where everything is covered by pink petals and the soil is literally like a milky sandy color. Naturally, that kind of place would just not exist on earth. Ah, it's so pretty. And then they come across the injured dragon who has turned into a white snake. We can rant about the snake later, but, but here, okay, here, the weird thing is the lady and the maid saw the snake and lady is like, wow, it's a really pretty white snake. If we don't save it, it will die. So maid, go and pick the snake up. And the maid is like, but I was bitten by a snake when I was little. I'm afraid of snake. And clearly the lady is not. I'm like, you are not afraid of snake, clearly. And you think the white snake is pretty. So why don't you go and get a snake yourself? Why do you force your maid to get it you when you know she hates snake? Earlier parts of the story kind of showed us that you two are more like sisters, right? You care about each other. You don't really use her as your maid. So why at this point you have to do that? It does not make logical sense. The only logical sense is because the scriptwriter said it has to be the female lead character getting the snake. Male lead and female lead. And then when you are afraid of snake and you have to pick it up, natural thing is cut a piece of your cloth on your huge long, I don't know, sleeve and skirt and wrap it or just make a makeshift bag and get the snake in and take it that way? No, our female character who is afraid of snake literally held the snake by her hands like that in her palms. <sighs> she puts the snake into a cage when the gap between the poles is that much wider than the actual snake! My hand is red now because I have done that to myself too many times filming this video. I just feel like there's a huge insult on me as an audience watching this drama. Later you'll come across the plot such as the lady wants to go to a temple for a few days and want to bring the maid with her and the maid refuses, says I pick beds. If I sleep on a bed, that's not my bed. I will lose sleep, you know me. And the lady is like, okay, okay, I know. L then you can stay at home and have fun. I want that job, okay? Headhunters out there, if you know a job like that, tell me. I am the perfect person for it. And the per the purpose of that plot is to leave the female lead character in the mansion so that her story and the dragon can continue. And then there's one thing, okay, I really want to rant about, which is when you see how she interacts with that CGI snake and the snake turns into the human form at night when they're sleeping on the bed, 10 miles of peach blossoms. Exact! 
plot as Bai Tian's story when she became Su Su in the human realm and then Ye Hua as the black dragon got injured and got saved by her. Even the snake looked the same with two little things sticking out of their head. The only difference is 10 Miles of Peach Blossom, it's a black dragon turning to a black little snake and this is a white dragon turning to a white little snake. Ironic thing is in 10 Miles of Peach Blossoms, Chu Xudan also played a character in that, Xuan Nui, who is a character who copies Bai Tian's face and everything. And then in Mr. Dragon, She's basically copying her boss's previous role in another fantasy drama where she also actually played a role in. How can you term this? Reversed serendipity? And honestly, I don't think anyone who's watched the, the Tim Miles drama would appreciate this. And I don't think the actress probably would appreciate that either. But who knows how they got signed to this drama and why they took part in this production. And then there are many, many other things that you can rent about this drama. But honestly, I don't want to make this video unnecessarily long, making my subtitling efforts that much more difficult. In the first four episodes, what I can see is uh, this drama just doesn't know what it's doing. Nothing makes sense. There's no logic working in any of the lines of the characters and nobody showed what their motive really is. Probably only this female second. Like she's clear about her motive, which is just get rid of a mark on her forehead. That's what she wants throughout the whole thing. And that's why she does everything for it. As for everybody else, you have no idea as a character what they want. And if this is a plotting character who has a lot of secrets hid hidden and they have like many layers of motives, that's fine. You can review it later, like most of the good storytellings are. But still at the beginning of the story, you should let me know what every character is here for. You know, why are they in the story? Why are they necessary for your narrative? And honestly, this drama just, just doesn't have that. And everything that happens in this drama is just like failing the most basic level of logic in any kind. And I haven't even started to rant about the aesthetics, which is really also very bad, okay, of this drama. I have the feeling that this drama is totally made not for the purpose of actually telling a visual story. Whether they're making it for money, which I don't see how. How do you sell this crap? Or whether it's another money laundry effort, which is very well known in the drama land these days. I don't know if for the particular case of Mr. Dragon, it is because of mm -hmm, purpose that they made this drama, but it could be, it could be a million other reasons that are just totally not because anyone wants to really make a drama, but because by making a drama, they can get something else. <sighs> It's just sad that this kind of things happen. At the end of the day, I can still comfort myself at the fact that um, maybe the existence of this kind of crappy production still has its purpose, which is for Avenue X to make a red video. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching and lucky drama selecting.